Welcome back to the Visual Center, everyone. I'm really excited for today's video. The Photoshop world is all in a buzz of this new feature called Generative AI. And I wanted to jump into Photoshop and show you some of its capabilities. Before I do that, if you're not familiar with what's going on, Adobe has been working on a number of AI supported tools. We've touched on a few of them in previous videos. There's the neural filters, which have been using AI. They've also been working on their own generative art engine, kind of like Midjourney, but they call it Fireflies. So what they did is they took Adobe Firefly and they put it inside Photoshop and they're calling the feature Generative Fill. It's really exciting and it's gonna change a lot of things for a lot of visual artists. Now it has a lot of capability, but there's four things that I wanted to talk about what you could use it for. You can use it to add, you can use it to remove, you can use it to change, and you can also use it to expand. Now let's jump into Photoshop and we'll talk about each of those four features. So the first thing you're gonna to want to note is that I'm using Adobe Photoshop Beta. So the generative AI is not in the main Photoshop yet. They just released it into Photoshop Beta. And so if you want access to it, you wanna open the Creative Cloud app and you wanna scroll down here where it says Beta Apps and you'll want to install Photoshop Beta. So install Photoshop Beta and you'll have access to the generative AI. Okay, so I've got my Photoshop Beta open here. I've got an image. First thing you're gonna note is down here is you have this new toolbar and they're actually adding this to the regular Photoshop, just not with the generative AI. Kind of what the properties panel has been doing um, and putting it into this little taskbar that you can you can move around. They're calling this the contextual taskbar. And like I said, it's kind of doing what the properties panel was doing, uh, but it's just kind of making this floating taskbar, making these uh, buttons really easily accessible, which is fantastic. Now I've played around with this feature just a little bit, um, but I haven't planned out anything for this video as far as images to create. I really just wanted to play around live in front of you so you can see what the capability is. So I downloaded a few images. I had some rough ideas in my head of what I want to do. So let's start with this one. This image, I was thinking, what if we could add some butterflies to the image? Okay, so the first thing we want to do for generative AI is to make a selection. So I'm going to grab my lasso tool, uh, and I'm just going to make a rough selection around her head. I'm just thinking some butterflies flying around her head. Simple, right? So you make a selection, and automatically the contextual taskbar jumps right to the bottom of the selection. I did notice that it was a little bit annoying. The more selections I made, the toolbar just kept jumping around and I didn't quite like that. So they have this feature where you can click on these three dots over here and you can say pin taskbar or pin bar position. And then you can just put it in one place and it's just gonna stay there. Uh, whenever you make a new selection, it's just gonna be in this one spot. So I'm just gonna put it over here for now. Uh, but I've made this selection and over here you'll see that the taskbar changed. I have these other options for editing. Uh, I can create a mask, I can create an adjustment layer, I can modify my selection. All these cool tools that we had before are now here in the contextual taskbar. Um, but the new feature that we're exploring today is generative fill. So we just click on that button. And what it does is it gives you this prompt. And if you've used anything like Midjourney or Adobe Firefly or Dolly, um, you're familiar with text-based prompts to create images, and this is exactly what it's doing. So I'm gonna say add butterflies, and we're gonna hit generate. Now, Adobe announced this a couple of days ago, and so the word is getting out, and lots of people are trying this, and so you're gonna run into this little error every now and then. 
where the system is busy because what it does is it takes your image and it uploads it to the cloud. It analyzes it and then tries to add your prompt. Right now the system is busy because everybody's so excited about it and everybody's trying it. So we're just gonna try it a few times until we get the load. Normally when it, when it was working before, it took a few seconds to go through the status bar. It doesn't take very long, but we'll see what happens. Okay, those are some big butterflies. Um, I was not expecting it to do that big of butterflies. Um, but one thing you will notice is if we look over here at the properties panel, um, it, it, it generates the art it thinks you want. Uh, and then over here, it gives you options, right? So if we click on this, we can see slightly different options for the butterflies. And again, these are really big butterflies. But another thing you'll notice is up here is you have the prompt that you used. What you can do is you can actually modify your prompt. A lot of hummingbirds. Let's try adding that. Let's see what that does. <laughs> okay, really big hummingbirds again. Um, let's take a look at our options here. And you can see they're really warped. So what I'm assuming is happening is it's trying to fit it to the shape of the selection that I made, which could be causing an issue. Okay, so let's leave this image for now. Let's try something else. One thing I did want to note is that down here, you can see that this generative AI is being non-destructive, right? It's adding this new generative layer with a layer mask. You get this new icon for generative layers. Um, if we turn this off and on, we can see what it's doing to change the image. Let's go to a different image. Let's just see how crazy you can get with this one. So I'm going to grab the lasso tool and I'm going to draw a selection around these guys. And we'll just include all of the sky. And what if we just did something crazy with erupt? Erupting Volcano. Let's see how it does with that. Okay. Okay. What are, let's check our other options here. So it's interesting. Not quite what I was looking for. All right. We can see how well it's blending, right? It's not perfect. But you know, I just did this in what, 20 seconds? And already it's masked out a thing, it's blended it, it's matched the color grading a little bit. That's a good like 30 minutes, hour, couple hours work. So I'm not getting what I want. What you can also do up here is you can just hit generate again and it gives you new options. And so I can look through these options. But another thing you'll notice is that I got these three new options. I still have the old options as well. So if I liked something better over here, I could always come back to it. And what if we wanted to change the prompt completely? What if we didn't want to do a volcano? What if we wanted to do a city skyline? Let it generate. There you go. You got a city skyline. Look at that. They even made it at night and everything. Well, that's a little bit more illustrative. Okay, but you notice that we changed the prompt. We still have the volcano pictures are still there. It's all attached to this generative layer. Okay, and let's talk about removing. Okay, so removing is something that's not foreign to most of us that use Photoshop. It has a lot of great tools to help remove things, blemishes, uh, things in the background, Lots of different great tools in Photoshop for removing things. But if we add this generative AI feature to it, it can become even more powerful. Let's take a look at this image, for example. We have this brick wall and we have this kind of smudge stain thing going on in the background. Um, what if I grabbed my lasso tool and I went around that? This is something that you would probably use like the patch tool for or clone stamping. 
Um, one thing I wanted to point out is that I'm on a brick wall um, where you have this really strong pattern and really strong patterns have difficulties with uh, healing brushes and clone stamping and it takes a lot of work. So I wanna see what the AI does with this. So I'm gonna do generative fill. And this time, instead of adding a prompt, I'm just gonna leave it blank. And the AI is just gonna take from the surroundings uh, and make a judgment based on that. So generate. And there you go, it cleaned it up. And if we look close, there's not a whole lot of issues that I see. If we turn this on and off, not a whole lot of issues. It did a really good job maintaining that pattern and keeping it clean, which means less work for me to do afterwards. Okay, so you can use it to remove. You can use it to add things. You can use it to remove things, kind of like an improved healing brush content aware feature. Okay, so we've got add, we've got subtract. We also have change, which is a really, really cool feature. Let's bring up this image. And here we have an image that looks like it could be for a clothing ad campaign. Um, but what if we wanted to change the clothing? Um, this is really cool. So let me just draw with my lasso tool. And again, I'm not being perfect with it. Um, but what if I just drew around her legs there? What if we go to generative fill? And what if we just changed what she was wearing? What if we just said jeans? And there you go. Now she's wearing jeans. And there's a few uh, uh, options in here. We can go look at what else is in here. Okay, even some jeans with holes in it. Um, but notice that I had a rough, large selection, so it was kind of going out. Notice how it's not filling it with these baggy jeans or anything like that. Um, but it went and found the shape of her legs um, and is filling it to the edge of her leg, not to the edge of my selection, which is really, really cool. Um, I can even come in here and what if we wanted to change the shirt, right? And again, I don't have to be perfect. I can just get up in there, create that selection. And what if we change this to a white tank top. Generate. <laughs> and look at that. We got this white tank top uh, on this lady. It even matched her skin tone. It added, um, she, she had a full sweater on before if we turn this off, right? It filled in her arms, shoulders, chest area, uh, collarbone, everything. And there's even a couple of options here. So if we don't like this one, we can change it around. It's even adding like hair hanging in different places, right? This one's not bad. What if we go with that one? But look at that. I changed her outfit. This is an incredible, incredible tool. Okay, so you can use it to change. You can also use it to expand. And what I mean by expand is expanding the frame which is not something completely new. It's something we've been able to do with the crop tool before. Uh, let me show you an example here. Let's go back to this image. Let's say we wanted to expand this frame a little bit. Um, something we've been able to do before is if we expand this and make sure that uh, delete cropped pixels is turned off. Um, if we expanded this, a couple of options that we've had before are uh, the content aware thing, right? Another option we had was in the crop tool itself. Okay, you had this option up here that says content aware. So let's use this generative fill feature. We'll accept that. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab a selection and we wanna grab a little bit of the original as well so it knows to blend it and not give us this little weird line that we need to fix later. Right, so I'm gonna grab a little bit of it and hit generative fill and I want the AI to just think for itself at this point. So I'm not gonna put a prompt in there. I'm just gonna hit generate. And look at that, it already did 10 times better. This isn't perfect. Um, it's got this weird thing in the wall here. I don't know if I like that, but again, it gives me options. I can come over here. I can see what option number two is. That's a little bit better on the wall. Here's another option. This one's really nice. So I'd probably go with that. Um, but I was able to extend this image. So if I wanted to turn this into a flyer or uh, some kind of announcement, I, there's 
tons of space here that I can add text uh, and information uh, on top of that. And it looks seamless. It looks real. It looks like it's part of that scene. It's crazy how good this is actually doing. Let's, let's make this bigger here so you guys can see. Um, but yeah, look at that. Look at that. Okay, it even added like weird little variations in the asphalt um, and it extended this uh, weird part of the structure here. Added a little hole in here to make it look a little bit more unique. Um, it's just crazy, it's crazy. So this idea of expanding the frame uh, was really interesting to me. When I was playing with this tool, I went way back to when I was in college. Um, it reminded me of this image that I turned in, this one right here. Right, did a self-portrait, uh, this picture, uh, was being critiqued in class, and one of the frequent comments I got on this that kind of stuck with me um, was they mentioned that they wished that it had more breathing room underneath my chin, that there was more space down here. Um, this image is not cropped. This is how the image was taken. So there isn't any more information um, for me to work with. But if I had this tool, I could do that. I can grab this image, I can grab my crop tool, and I can pull the frame down a bit. Okay, you want more breathing room underneath the chin? I just do that. Okay, accept that, and then grab my marquee tool here, make a selection, generative fill, generate. And there you go, more room underneath my chin. Problem solved, right? And again, I've got options here. I can take a look to see what it's doing with, you know, my shirt. That one actually looks pretty nice. Right, but I think I would go with that one probably. So an incredible, incredible tool. Um, I'm really excited about it. This has been so much fun to play with. I'd encourage you all to grab a copy of Photoshop Beta. Try this tool out, it's incredible. Now, there's a lot of controversy going on right now. A lot of people are freaking out because they're like, oh, this is gonna take away people's jobs. And I'm thinking like professional retouchers, professional compositors. They're freaking out a bit because they're like, what if this replaces my job? I'm not too worried about it. But the reason I'm not too worried about it is they were saying the same thing about Photoshop when Photoshop came out. There was a big controversy about, we're not gonna know what images are real, people are getting really good at using Photoshop and creating this fake imagery, it's gonna be the downfall of photography, and it wasn't, right? Photoshop became a tool that people learned how to use well. And there was other people who didn't learn it at all, and those people needed the people who knew how to use it. And that's how I see this generative AI. It's a tool, just like anything else. And I think if people accept that and start learning how to use it, there's gonna be people out there that will not learn the AI features and they'll want to outsource to you to edit their images. Again, I don't see it as a replacement, I see it as a new tool for artists to grab hold and learn and use. So I'm excited for it. Hope you're excited for it. Thanks for watching this video. And if you want us to explain or explore anything with this feature again, Put those ideas in the comments below and we'll make more videos. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.